Stop trying to chip like Phil Mickelson because it is ruining your game. Yes, in this video, we're gonna be sharing why Phil Mickelson's technique, the hinge and hold method, is actually so harmful for golfers. But we're gonna show you a very simple, easy method that's gonna have you feeling more relaxed, more confident, and it's even going to make your bad shots still turn out good. We're not bashing Phil. Well, actually, we kind of are bashing, but we're not. So look, he is one of the best golfers ever, got one of the best short games ever, but he is incredibly talented, very skillful, works at his game a lot. It's his job. It's his <laughs> job, it's his job, and he's one of the best at it. So his precision is one of the best ever. Now, if we're looking at the average golfer, to try and copy that precision, it kind of doesn't make sense. So please make sure you don't do what he does. Now look, if you enjoy this video, which we know you're going to, make sure you hit the like, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe. Okay, Andy, so we're gonna go through the two methods, the fill way, and then the easy, more simple and more consistent way. So let's go with the hinge and hold first and what problems it can potentially cause. Okay, well, let's explain what the hinge and hold is, first of all, just so you understand this. So what Phil says is that on the way back, we wanna create an element of hinge. And what we're talking about really is the, the angle in the wrists. And then on the way through, we wanna hold those angles in order to keep the leading edge down onto the ground. So we create this, he describes it, this inverted line through impact and then we hold that into the finish. So you'll see here now that the, the angle of the, um, between the arm and the club is there, but we've got these sort of, the club head is very low here as well. So the idea that Phil talks about is really hinging on the way back and holding that angle to keep the leading edge down. Now, we're not saying that this is wrong, by the way. What Phil does is absolutely incredible. But he's pretty good, isn't he? He's, he's pretty good. <laughs> but what we've seen over time is golfers who come to us for lessons who are trying to do the hinge and hold, it completely screws them up. Why does it screw them up? This is the most important thing. Well, what happens is, we talk about this a lot. What are golfers scared of? Golfers are scared of thinning it through the back or actually duffing it, hitting the ground early. And we talk about this so much that what we wanna do when it comes to using the club is allow the actual bounce of the club to glide across the turf. So if we can use the bounce of the club glided across the turf, our confidence and our interaction with the ground is pleasant as opposed to a horrible <laughs> duff. Now, the issue that we've got when we see excessive lean, uh, shaft lean is it exposes the leading edge. So as soon as we lean the shaft forward now, we've completely took off the bounce of the club, which means now that if you hit the ground first, that club is digging into the ground, which is disaster. But what you need to do to play this shot really well is you need to be absolutely precise. Now, that's great if you're Phil Mickelson, you've got a real high skill level because he's gonna be so repeatable and very consistent. But for the average golfer who plays on the weekend, if they're trying to lean the shaft forward and hitting the ground first, it's gonna leave that horrible diggy duff feeling where you feel like you've decelerated. So let me just play a shot first of all because you'll see that it can be played. So. I'm gonna hinge and hold on the way through. So this is ball back in the stance. Even for you there, that looks the air. You need to knock it a bit further exactly. back. Exactly. Because so, you're not used to it being that far back. So here we go. So hinge, hold. Now I've played that shot look very, very nice. Now the shot's gone extremely low for mm. a 52, but I've hit the golf ball absolutely perfect. But you can even see where I've hit the ground there. It's created this sharp, almost like knife edge where it's stopped into the ground. It's sort of dug into the ground there. So if I got that wrong, disaster. But if I get it right, it's absolutely fine. But you've got to think about how fast the club is traveling here and then how fast is the club traveling here. It's reducing in speed drastically. So you're right, it's got to be perfect. Now, the problem is what we see amongst golfers is that as soon as we try and create the hinge and then hold, what happens is that they often are going down into the ground. So it's more of a hinge and then and like that. So it goes straight into the ground, horrible shot, really embarrassing. Another thing that it causes here is that, I want you to show you from face on here, if I create a hinge and then I hold the hinge for as long as possible, notice now, look, that the arc, I've narrowed it. The only way I can get to the golf ball now is by lowering myself like this. So if I hold on to too much angle here, I've got to do something which is not very nice. If you've, if you've ever hit a shot and you feel like your knees are dipping, it's because there's too much angle. So your knees dip to lower the arc down to the bottom of the golf ball. 
So it doesn't create so many good things in the swing, really. The instance in that is the knees dipping is actually Im imperative. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. It's what you have to do to hit the golf ball. But ultimately, we don't want to be doing that. Yeah, so you just go over the top of it if you didn't. You'd just be doing this here like this. So that's why it's probably not a good idea to do it. And look, look, we're not saying that you shouldn't do it. We're just recommending that you don't because you have to be such high skill level in order to do it. And there's a few things that you need to do right. You've got to land the club in the exact same spot very often to be consistent with that, haven't you? And your bad ones are terrible. What we're about to show you in a minute, your bad ones are still going to be good. The good okay. ones are good, but the bad ones are going to be still good. All right, so what are we looking at? Are you done with that? Are you happy with that? I think so, yeah. All right, let's go into the next bit then. So what is the simple, consistent, easier way simple way first of all you need to develop a good relationship with the ground that means we want you to be able to hit the ground and actually have the element of freedom and confidence that the club is going to glide because it means you can hit the ground just before the golf ball get it slightly off but because of the bounce angle it's going to glide across the turf which means you'll still hit a nice shot even if you're a little early on the ground so the first point what we're going to do is we're actually just going to put a tee either side of the golf ball behind, maybe a couple of inches behind the golf ball, and just show you and get you used to hitting the ground slightly before the golf ball. So we're okay saying that it's fine to hit the, the ground between these tee pegs and the ball, providing we don't get any excessive shaft lean. So that's the first thing, just want you to go, okay, let's see if we can land the club just before the golf ball and get used to it. Would you recommend doing that with practice swings first? Definitely. A lot of practice swings? Yeah, so you can just have some practice swings and just feel as if you're brushing that ground, where those tees are, and you'll get a sense of how the club brushes and glides. Every time I do this, I feel the club gliding across the surface. Do that again for me a few more times. And just understand, remember before when I was talking about how it was accelerating before versus after, sorry, the speed of the club, the speed of the club now as it goes through these tees and brushing with the ground is a lot more consistent. It's a lot more constant, that speed. It's hardly dropping when it hits the ground. So the key thing is now, how do we do this? What do we do in the technique? Well, we mentioned shaft lean. Well, we don't want excessive shaft lean. So let's get the shaft pretty neutral. Let's say at the belt buckle in our, in our setup here. We're gonna go feet narrow. Ball position can be center or even slightly ahead. That's absolutely fine. So we're gonna keep this neutral, but we're also gonna just raise the shaft slightly here. This is really important to get that sole of the club flat on the ground. Now, in terms of the motion, this is really important. The motion is going to be driven by the shoulders. We're going to swing the shoulders and the arms back. We're going to turn to the right. It's okay to have a little bit of wrist set in the backswing here. So you'll see as I'm swinging back here, there's a little bit of wrist set. But what, what's really important, if we create some set, we want to release that. So we want to make sure we swing back. If we create some set in the wrist, release that as we continue to turn and then turn through here. What's really important is that we keep the butt end of the club through impact pointing somewhat close to the belt buckle. So if I swing back, I'm choking down here, that's gonna come away as I create a little bit of wrist set, but down to impact, bang, I'm getting the butt to point at the belt buckle, continue to turn through, and you'll see this now is still pointing at the belt buckle. This really helps you use the bounce in a good way. And one thing that's crucial, look at the arms. The arms are nice and soft. We don't wanna be seeing any extension of these arms away from the body here, because that changes the the arc in the swing. So we're really going to feel as if the arms are nicely connected. Let's hit a shot, actually. Yeah, let's say hit a few shots here, Andy. Let's, let's get a few out there, because it's almost like you just, as you say, you're just collecting the ball off the turf, aren't you? So what, just watch the finish here as well. So a little bit of wrist set. And you'll see here, when I've finished, I've got the, book, the, the butt of the club. My arms are soft. It's pointing at the belt buckle here. And that was really easy. That was, I've got no fear of the ground there, because I'm using the club to glide across the surface nice. as well. Okay, so let's have another one there now. So again, soft hands, really important. The, the pressure in the hands is quite soft here. So a bit of a brush and watch the finish. Look at the difference in the height as well compared yeah, to the fill one. Higher. That one could go in, but look at and the- And it's better, which it had to be, because if Phil's was the best one, it would have been a problem. Exactly, look <laughs> at the finish though. The arms are soft, the, the butt is still here. I'm facing the target. Such an important thing just, to get right. Just one thing you mentioned earlier about a little bit of wrist set. Are you creating that wrist set or is it the softness in the hands and the momentum of the club which is almost creating that? Really good point. So the, I'm not trying to create the set. I'm not going, right, let's, let's set the wrist here. All I'm doing is I'm keeping the wrist so soft that as I swing back, the momentum is going to produce the wrist set. So if I'm swinging back here, there's going to be less wrist set than if I swing back to here. So it's the softness of yeah. the hands and the weight of the club effectively. It's still the heaviest club in the bag, so it's going to want to move. I'm not stopping the wrists. I'm certainly not active with the wrists. I'm just feeling that they, they are just moving. You just so haven't made your mind up, basically. Exactly. So let's try another <laughs> one here. He's on the fence. 
Again, look at the height difference yeah, on that. So look at the better. finish position. Again, facing the target, arms are very soft. So here's something that you and, can do. And just quickly, by the way, some of you might say, well, what about when you're in the grain or you're in a, in a, in a bad situation? This is into the grain, by the way. This is actually into the grain. So in the rough, some nice strikes on in the, the rough, there. we need to be different, by the way. This is from the fairway. So there's a great, here's a great drill for you. Club under, club, head cover underneath the arm. I really like the choke down one here so you can see where the butt is. So you're going to swing back and you're just going to feel as if you can return so the butt is to the, the belt buckle and then keep that on the way through. And you'll see the hands are nice and soft. There's even a little bit of set on the way through. We don't have to keep these wrists firm and keep the club here. Let's allow these to be soft here on the way through. So you can do a shot like that as well. So full length, keep the connection in the arms and the body. A little bit of ground first. Again, really nice shot. Look at the finish position again there. That's like 10 inches left of the hole. But again, just get, the, get used to doing this. Keeping the connection here, shaft nice and neutral, back and through, a little bit of set. Make sure we feel the brushing of the ground. And that, that shot he hit before, just by the way, he hit an inch before the golf ball. He hit the ground an inch before. That one there, he hit pretty much on the golf ball. And yet the result is Ooh. virtually the same. Ooh, now here's, here's the best thing about I this. I like it, I've got three closer than Phil's technique pretty, there. They're pretty good, they're pretty good. The, the, the real cool thing with this is, you hit two golf balls in exactly the same place, pretty much, and the difference in where you hit the ground was that much. Now if you did that with the Phil technique, you'd have one here, <laughs> and you'd have one in the water at the back of the green. Oh yeah, I'm absolutely dead. Okay, so look, we love Phil, but do not copy what he does with short game. It is much harder to do. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you would like more coaching from myself and Pierce, make sure you click here to go to meandmygolf.com or simply download the Me and My Golf app. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you again soon.